All right, students, time for your tissues exam. So this will be one of your easier lab exams to do. So I'm actually going to go through the study guide, which also has the exact pictures that you'll use on the exam. So your exam will be in color. You'll have color photographs. It'll be the same ones that are from this study guide. So the format of the tissues exam is that there will be multiple choice questions. There's four of them per each picture. Again, they will be the same pictures. You'll have one hour to take the exam and the exam is worth 50 points. Again, this is a easy way to rack up a nice amount of points to kind of stuff your grade a little. Okay, first type or first picture. So in this picture, the primary tissue type is epithelial. So the question would be like, um, what's the primary tissue type? And your answer choices would be epithelial, muscular, connective, or nervous. So for this picture, you would answer epithelial. Similar situation, what is the subclass of the tissue? And that's simple squamous. So I'm going to point that out. So with this picture, we have our one layer of cells. So there's simple. It's squamous because it's that flat fried egg shape of cell. Um, again, we have our epithelial tissue. So our basement membrane would be along the bottom of this one. So you can't really see the basement membrane as well, but it's there. And then remembering our epithelial tissue is always going to be paired with the connective one. But on this picture, we're focusing on the epithelial tissue. So tissue location for this one is in the lungs and the function is diffusion and filtration. So you'll have the questions like such as where's this tissue located? What's the major function of this tissue? So you choose those answers for this picture. Next picture. So primary tissue type is epithelial and subclass is simple cuboidal. So this is a tissue that's found in the kidneys so in our kidneys, we have different tube shapes that help with filtering out our blood as well as creating urine. So I'm actually going to focus on this section, what's creating a large tube here. So epithelial, we have our basement membrane and it's simple. So our one layer of cells, it's cuboidal. So this little outline will also be on your test. So showing you that is equally as wide as it is tall. So major function of this tissue is absorption and secretion. So dealing with the kidney function, it's going to absorb stuff that you want to keep that was filtered out of your blood and secrete the rest of it out as the waste product urine. Next one, a connective tissue type. So remembering our connective tissue has a lot of space in between the cells usually. So subclass is loose connective areolar tissue with the... Fibers in this type of tissue being elastic, collagen, and reticular. So in this picture, these big, thick, larger pink ones are the collagen fibers, which would be the answer for that question. Again, that arrow will also be there. And then you also have some elastic fibers. You don't see reticular on this picture, but this type would have it. And then our fibroblasts are these little purple dots. Again, there's a lot of space that's running in between our cells for a lot of your connective tissues. Speaking of connective tissues, here's another one. So for this one being blood, so it's ground substance, the space in between the cells is made up of our plasma. The structure at the end of the pointer, so this dark black arrow pointer is a red blood cell. And the function of this tissue specifically is to transport nutrients and waste products. Next one, we have a epithelial tissue so I have our basement membrane here at the bottom, which is also the answer for that question for the structure at the end of the pointer. Uh, so this type of epithelial will be stratified squamous. So we have multiple layers, so it's stratified, so at least two. And then again, our little outline that's going to show the cell shape being squamous, so that flat fried egg shape. So in this example, the tissue location for the non-keratinized version, so keratinized being skin, the location of this type would be found in the esophagus. So remembering you need multiple layers to protect your esophagus as you're swallowing a bunch of stuff down your throat. So they have multiple layers of cells. 
new picture. This one is connective, specifically being adipose or our fat cells. So each of the little dots is our nucleus for the cell, and then all of this opening space would be where it would store the, those triglycerides. Least likely a location for this type of tissue would be in the brain and spinal cord. So in this area, in our vertebra, there's just not any space to put anything else. So the spinal cord runs inside the vertebra and allows you protection for your spinal cord. Let's pop up his skull case. There we go. All of that space is all filled with brain. So there's no room really for anything else. Um, so you do have fat around certain areas like your eyeballs to hold them in place as well as your kidneys hold that in place. But in the brain and spinal cord, there's just no room. So function of this tissue is protection and support. So protect the outside of our body, nice and cushioning. And then again, eyeballs, kidneys, that's areas where you're able to cushion and keep those organs in place. Next one, we have epithelial tissue. So again, our cells are aligned on a basement membrane. In this example, it's pseudostratified, strato, pseudostratified columnar. So we have our multiple layers, but they look like they're stratified. But again, remembering that all of the cells will touch that basement membrane, even though they look like they're stacked on top of each other. The tiny structures at the end of the pointer are the cilia. So our even longer cell extensions off of our cell. And the location for this one is the trachea. Another connective tissue. So there's a bunch of these on there. So this connective tissue, remembering our space in between our cells, so many, much space in between it. This one particularly is the hyaline cartilage. So it has more of a glassy, clear appearance, so you can actually see through it. You can see a nucleus even right through here, even through some of the layers of the fibers of collagen. The structure at the end of the pointer, so our black arrow, would be a chondrocyte in a lacunae. So with our fibroblast cells of cartilage, they're called chondroblasts. Eventually they become chondrocytes when they've built enough tissue around the cells where they're trapped in that little lacunae cave. Location for this is around the trachea. So we have cartilage that is around the trachea. Um, Depending on the year that we do this, you've either already done that mink dissection and have seen the striped appearance on the trachea, those are cartilage rings, or you will eventually see that. Okay, next one, nervous tissue. So this is the tissue that is responsible for communication through the body, so between our brain and other sensory or organs or muscles or glands having that communication. So there's long extensions off of these cells in order to help with communication. So, sorry, tissue type is nervous. The large cell in both of these pictures are our motor neurons. So these are the ones that are gonna be giving commands to muscles. So they are fairly large sized cell and then have these really long extensions that are going to go to the target muscle. The location of the cell body, so this large portion of the cell, is protected in the spinal cord. So back to our skeleton. We have our spinal cord here. The motor command goes from that main cell body and then out to wherever that muscle is to cause the movement. So function of the tissue is communication. Next tissue slide. So this is an example of muscular tissue. So that's the primary tissue type for this picture. Subclass is skeletal. So we've covered this. Skeletal muscle is striated. Same thing with cardiac. But the difference between these two striated types of muscle is our skeletal muscle, the nuclei, which are multiple only in skeletal muscle, they're located along our plasma membrane. So these little lines you can see is where that plasma membrane is, and then your nuclei are pushed up against it. The structure at the end of the pointer. So this long black arrow, that would be one of our nuclei. 
and the location of this is attached to bone. So again, skeletal muscle attached to bone. So therefore, when it gets the command to contract, it can then move. Well, move, move the skeleton to cause movement. Okay, next picture, we have a connective tissue type. So here we have our tiny little, in this case, chondrocytes that are in lacunae. So our little Ks in those areas, little circles. You can actually see a lot more of the fibers in this one. So you can easier see, more easily see it. So subclass of this one is fibrocartilage. So think fibers, like little strings. You can see all these little strings in this cartilage. The structure at the end of the pointer, our black arrow. So what cells live in that hole? So that would be a chondrocyte. So remembering our chondrocyte are the mature fibroblast type cells that build cartilage. So once they become trapped in that lacunae cave, then they become the chondrocyte. Predominant fiber present in the tissue is collagen. Here we have another muscular version of tissue. So in this case, we see our striped striated pattern. So it's either skeleton or cardiac, but in this case, it's cardiac. And here's the reason why we're able to tell that. We have our intercalated disc, which is the structure at the end of the pointer. So these lines, these connectors between our different cells. Our cardiac muscle is branched, so it's going to be all and shorter than skeletal muscle. So this is why you can see multiple cells in this picture as well as it bending and moving in different directions. As well with cardiac, you have one nucleus and in some of these you actually can see the white around it, that's the storage of glycogen, allows for energy storage even within the muscle itself. The function of the structure at the end of the pointer, so our intercalated disc, allows for the passage of ions and nutrients between cell to cell and that allows for our heart muscle or cardiac muscle to be able to contract at the same time. Next picture we have epithelial tissue. So in this one we have multiple layers of structures so that's why it looks like there's multiple ones but there's not. Simple columnar is the type. So we have our basement membrane here so we're forming some kind of tube structure. Again our outline is going to tell us the cell shape, so taller than it is wide, so it's columnar. Again, epithelial tissue. The structure at the end of the pointer, so our black arrow, and we're going to go all the way over here. That's a goblet cell. So, of course, I'm in my office, so I don't actually have access to a wine glass, but you can see the shape. We have our kind of actual cup section and the little stem off of it like a wine glass. So what is the special function of the above structure, the goblet cell? It is a single cell gland and secretes mucus, so it's the only job that it does. By the way, that's one of the questions on the exam, by the way, your regular exam. Okay, next picture. We're almost done. So this tissue type is epithelial, so our basement membrane is here. It is transitional, so this is a type of stratified, multiple layer type of tissue, except for it becoming, instead of it becoming smaller as you go up in layers, transitional tissue is going to become larger in the upper layer. So if we actually can see our nuclei more packed together at the bottom layers and more spread out in the top layers. So the function of it having those larger cells at the top layers is that it's going to provide stretch for the tissue location being in the bladder. Same thing with also your ureters. You're also going to have this type of tissue. So as it fills up with urine, that stretch allows it to hold a little bit more urine so you're not having to go to the bathroom every five minutes. All right, last picture. So this one is yet another connective type. This one specifically being osseous tissue or bone, specifically compact bone. So we have our osteans making up our picture here, our big circular structures, our dark circles in the middle would be the structure at the end of, the, of this pointer being our Haversian canal or also called the central canal. So it allows for the passage of nerves and blood vessels through the length of bone. 
For this other one, we have a osteocyte. So this structure is in a lacunae as well. So our little spider looking structures, those osteoblasts that build bone until they become trapped in that lacunae, eventually becoming osteocytes. And then they have the uh, caniculi to allow them to have the cell extensions to be able to communicate to other cells. So that's why it looks like little spiders. So as you're going through these, so if you need to figure out little goofy ways of remembering, okay, which type goes with which. So for example, our bone tissue, looking at the spiders, oops, wrong direction. Um, sometimes I've gotten people who were looking at, okay, I know muscle ones are going to kind of look like meat or like with our connective tissue for our different cartilages. We have these kind of cartoon looking eyes. So like the white part of the eye and then your pupil and iris section being the little dot of the actual cell, our chondrocyte. Oh, wrong direction. So whatever little goofy thing you got to look at. So our adipocytes, adipose tissue, um, looking kind of like an open wire for like a chicken wire with like a fencing or some other ones, okay, this is blood, it's probably easy. But a lot of your connective ones are going to have circular structures, like our cartoon eyes for our cartilage, circular structures of the red blood cells, our osteo, osseous tissues, osseous tissue, excuse me, having the osteons, which are circular in structure. So figuring out what will help you remember that it's going to do well on that tissue exam. So good luck.